Welcome geometers to the third video of chapter 3, which is section 3, Prove Lines Are Parallel. So far in section 1, we learned about the special types of angles, the consecutive interior, the corresponding, the alternate interior, and the alternate exterior. Then in section 2, we learned the properties of those angles when we have parallel lines that are cut by a transversal. Third section, we're going to continue with those angles and use them to prove that lines are parallel. So our objective for today is to use properties of parallel lines to prove that lines are parallel. So I'm going to give you two lines and you're going to be asked to use some information to determine are the lines parallel, yes or no. So there are four main ways to prove that the lines are parallel. The first one is to show that a one pair or at least one pair of corresponding angles are congruent. You can also show that the alternate interior angles are congruent. You can show that the alternate exterior angles are congruent. And, can you guess the last one? You can show that the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Remember that the consecutive interior are the ones that are different. Those are the ones that are supplementary. So if you can show any of these four, this will prove that the lines are parallel. So let's look at an example. Example one. It says, if the measure of angle one in the picture below is 60 degrees, what must be the measure of angle five so that B is parallel to K? So it tells us that the measure of angle one is 60 degrees. We are looking for the measure of angle five. So the first thing that we know is angles 1 and 5 are corresponding. Okay, so then we know that B is parallel to K if we have a pair of corresponding angles congruent. That's property 1 above. So therefore, that would mean that angle 5 is also 60 degrees. And that's because the corresponding angles are congruent. So that should be very similar to what we did in the last section. We're just changing the meaning a little bit. In the last section, if the lines were parallel, then the corresponding angles were congruent. This time we're going in the opposite direction. Here, 1 and 5 are congruent. That tells us that B is parallel to K. So let's look at another example. Okay, so this one, it says the measure of angle 3 is 65 degrees, and the measure of angle 7 is 3x plus 5. Find the value of x that makes the lines parallel. This one I would like you to try. So I'll pause the video, try this one on your own, and come back when you are finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did. Now the first thing that you're going to notice, or the first thing you want to determine, is what type of angle pair are 3 and 7. Well, 3 and 7, again, are corresponding angles. Then we know that the lines are parallel if we have a pair of corresponding angles congruent. So in this case, the lines are parallel if angle 3 is congruent to angle 7. So congruent just means they have the same measure, so set them equal. 65 equals 3x plus 5. Let me subtract 5 from both sides. So I get 60 equals 3x. Dividing by 3, I get x equals 20. Checking my answer, if I substitute 20 back in, I have 3 times 20 add 5, which will give me 65. Now, I have corresponding angles congruent, therefore the lines are parallel. Hopefully that one went well for you. If you made a mistake, that's okay. Let's slip to the next page. Okay, so example number three says, can the given lines be proven parallel, yes or no? So I'm going to do the first one with you, and then you're going to do two. So looking at this first picture over here, I need to first determine, do I have any angle pair? a special angle pair. Well, I'll notice that I have alternate exterior angles that are congruent. So remembering from last section, if two lines, parallel lines, are cut by a transversal, 
then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. Now we're going backwards. If the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then yes, A is parallel to B. So I have alternate exterior angles congruent, therefore my lines are parallel. So right now, pause the video and you do the next two within example three, please. I need yes or no and why. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now for the second one, the one to the right of the example we just did, again, we have corresponding angles. So you should have gotten that yes, A is parallel to B because we have corresponding angles congruent. So I didn't mention this before, but of those four ways to prove lines parallel, only one has to be true. So I don't need to show corresponding angles and alternate exterior and alternate interior. I only have to show one angle pair. Here I have one angle pair, therefore my lines are parallel. Okay, and then the next one. We are told that angles 1 and 2 are 180. Now, angles 1 and 2 are alternate interior angles. Now, we know from last section that if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so in this case, we are told that the alternate interior angles are not congruent, they're supplementary. Now, alternate interior need to be congruent in order for the lines to be parallel, not supplementary. So we have alternate interior are supplementary. So this tells us, no, we cannot prove that A is parallel to B. They could be parallel, but we cannot prove that they are parallel. The only way for us to prove that they are parallel is if angles 1 and 2 were congruent. The only angle pair that is allowed to be supplementary to prove that lines are parallel is consecutive interior. So hopefully you got the, those right. Moving on to example 4. This, prop, this type of example is extremely difficult. So it says determine which lines can be proven parallel with the given information. So I'm going to do two with you, and then you're going to do two. Okay, so the first bullet point is that angle one is congruent to angle five. Okay, so let's mark that. Now these four bullet points are four separate problems. So the first thing I need to identify is what is my transversal. Now when I marked one and five, A is the only line that they both touch. That means that A is the transversal. If A is the transversal, then I could ignore B. Okay, so now I'm just looking at A, C, and D. 1 and 5, then, are corresponding angles. A is the transversal, which means that C is parallel to D. Angle 1 is on line C, angle 5 is on line D. Okay, so if that went too fast, make sure you re rewind and listen to what I said again. Now let's go on to the second bullet point. So the second one says angle 1 is congruent to angle 16. So let's mark that. So first thing, what is my transversal? Well, the, the two angles have to touch the same transversal. Angle 1, in this case, touches lines A and C. Angle 16 touches lines B and D. There's no transversal. If there's no transversal, then I cannot prove that any lines are parallel. Again, in this case, it could be that A and B are parallel, or C and D are parallel, or they're all parallel. You know, there's two pairs, but we can't prove. We don't have enough information to prove lines parallel. Okay, so now I want you to try the next two on your own. If I went too fast, make sure you, you rewind and listen to the first two examples again. Pause the video, try the next two, and come back when you are finished, please.
Okay, let's see how we did. Next one, angles two and 14. So angle two, angle 14. So first of all, what is my transversal? Well, angle two touches lines A and C. Angle 14 touches lines B and D. There's no common line that both angles touch. That means there is no transversal. If there is no transversal, then we cannot prove that any lines are parallel. So there could be lines parallel, we can't prove any though. And then the last one, angles 3 and 10. So 3 and 10. Okay, so first of all, what line do they both touch? Well, hopefully you notice that they both touch line C. That means line C is my transversal. If line C is my transversal, I can ignore the one that's opposite to it. So I can ignore D altogether. Then I notice if C is my transversal, 3 and 10 are alternate exterior angles. That proves that A is parallel to B. So hopefully those two went well. If not, that's okay. Hopefully you see what mistakes you made. If you're still confused, please make sure you put a question mark or you star this question so you know to ask me in class. Okay, let's move on. So the transitive property, we've learned that before. Now we're going to write it in terms of parallel lines. So the transitive property of parallel lines says if line A is parallel to line B and line B is parallel to line C, then A is parallel to C. So just like the transitive property before, this B acts as our bridge. It connects the A and C. So this is what I'm saying. If A is parallel to B, the way I can mark it is with arrows. And I also know that B is parallel to C, then A has to be parallel to C. And that should be pretty intuitive. We are going to use that in this next proof. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can write a little more clearly. Okay, so this is just an introduction to proofs, but we, we actually are going to do another day where we just do all proofs, but just stick with me through this one. So it says copy and, and complete the proof. So the first statement is that angle 1 is 115 degrees, so I'm going to mark that on my figure, and angle 2 is 65 degrees, and I want to prove that the lines are parallel. Okay, so the first thing, I know that angle 1 is 115 and angle 2 is 65, and that's given. So I'm looking at the statement and the reason. Then I know that 115 plus 65 equals 180. That's addition. Now here's where I need to step in. Somehow I went from 115 plus 65 to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. So 180 stayed the same. So I noticed that 115 changed to angle 1. And I notice that 65 changed to angle 2. And that all comes from this first statement. Instead of writing 115, I wrote the measure of angle 1, which is from here. So this is substitution. So I took that second statement, and in place of 115, I wrote the measure of angle 1. In place of 65, I wrote the measure of angle 2. Now, if I know that angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180, my next statement is that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. The reason for this is just the definition of supplementary. Angles that sum to 180 are supplementary. Lastly, M is parallel to N. Well, I'm going to notice in my figure, angles 1 and 2 are consecutive interior angles. From previously in the video, we know if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So the way that you're going to write this is if the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, which is what we just proved, then we know that the lines are parallel. So in step four, we proved that we have consecutive angles that are supplementary that tells us that the lines are parallel. So if I lost you on that, that's okay. We are going to do another day of just proofs. So please flip the page. Okay, so we have one more proof that we're going to do, and then you have an example to do on your own. 
So for example six, it says in the figure, r is parallel to s, so I'm gonna mark that. And angle one is congruent to angle three. Okay, so we always know for every proof, we start out with what's given. So I know that r is parallel to s, and I know that angle one is congruent to angle three. Both of these are given. Okay, ideally, we want to prove that P and Q are parallel. Now, they tell us that R and S are parallel for a reason. So we need to think, what is that reason? Now, if R and S are parallel, so looking at these two lines, look, these are parallel, I have two options for a transversal. I have P as my transversal or Q as my transversal. If I look at line P, there's only one angle that's marked that's touching line P, and that's angle 3. So instead, let me look at line Q. Line Q has angles 1 and 2 on it. So I need to think, are those a special angle pair of some type? Well, they are corresponding angles, so they're going to be congruent. So my next statement is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. This is because if the lines are parallel, so in this case R and S are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so now what I notice is I have 1 congruent to 3, and 1 is also congruent to 2. So 1 is like the bridge between the two. And next I can say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Now what is that property called when we use the bridge? Hopefully you remember that this is the transitive property. Okay, so now I need to mark that on my figure, and I hope that it helps me in some way. So now I know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. I'm going to notice that they both touch line R. This makes R our transversal, so we're going to ignore the one next to it, we're going to ignore the S. Okay, now 2 and 3 we notice are alternate at interior angles for P and Q. I have alternate interior angles, which means my lines are parallel. So next I can say that P is parallel to Q because I have alternate interior angles that are congruent. So if alternate interior angles are congruent, then we know that the lines are parallel. Okay, so I know this was one, one was confusing, but let me just summarize. So what I did is I used the information about R and S being parallel to show corresponding angles with angles 1 and 2. Then by the transitive property, I knew 2 and 3 were congruent. Because these are alternate interior angles, that showed that the lines were parallel. So, if I lost you somewhere, please go back and rewatch. If you still can't figure it out, put a star or a question mark next to this problem so we know to go over it in class. We have reached the end of this video. In this video, you learned how to prove lines parallel. So, occasionally you're going to be asked to fill out a proof like the two that we just did. Or you might be asked, is it possible to prove the lines parallel? Or you might be asked, which lines are proven parallel? So here is your example problem to do. It says, is P parallel to Q? And explain. So tomorrow, I'm going to be looking for an answer that says yes or no, with an explanation as to why. It should use one of those four reasons that you learned at the beginning of the video. Good luck.